this is NTU Tuesday Live and I'm Cyril Stober. Uh, recently the National Economic Council approved the sum of 5 billion naira to each state of the Federation with trucks of grains and other consumables to cushion the effects of the fuel subsidy removal. This has continued to generate public discourse and how these interventions will get to the targeted population especially the poor and vulnerable. Tonight, NG Tuesday Live will focus on the federal government's palliatives with a number of guests across board. But before we go into the conversation, let's get to see this report put together by agriculture correspondent Musa Aliu. Nations are required to keep at least 8% of their annual harvest in case of emergency, such as disaster, war, and other environmental factors. The food from reserve, if released, can also stabilize prices in case of scarcity and high inflation in the country. This is the wisdom behind the federal government's establishment of silos like this in strategic locations in the country. It is in this regard that the federal government announced the release of tons of assorted food items to cushion the effects of food inflation in the country. We have some buffer stock that is already there with NEMA and the council has directed the states will be allocated immediately substantial portion of food items, grains and so on and so forth for distribution so that the prices of food stock will come down and it will be given at a subsidized rate or at the rate at which it is acquired from NEMA because it is free. Uh, of course, CBN also, because of their Anko Borrower program and the program they had in agriculture, they have a large stock of uh, rice and other grains that are going to make available within one week. This was during the National Economic Council meeting in July this year. Some state governors have confirmed to the NTA that they have received some trucks of maize and rice, even though the food items were not released through the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has earlier announced. For instance, Ocean State confirmed the receipt of four trucks carrying 2,400 bags of assorted food. Officials from the state disclosed that they are awaiting another 600 bags from the federal government. Similarly, Borno State have received and even commenced distribution of the food items. Other states such as Niger, Kebi and Bochi have constituted committees to look at ways the palliative will be distributed. Then what we are doing now, providing palliatives to Nigerians who never solve our problems. Because these are shorter term solutions. We must look for medium and longer term sustainable solutions that will address the problem of insecurity, problem of food insecurity in Nigeria. The National Economic Council in August this year also announced the release of 5 billion naira to each state of the Federation and the FCT. The money, part of it is a loan, is to be used to purchase food and other farming input that will be distributed to the poor and the vulnerable. In order to cushion the effect of food shortages across the country, the federal government has approved the sum of 5 billion naira to be given to each state for the procurement of 100,000 bags of rice, 100,000 bags of rice, 40,000 bags of maize, and Fertilizers. While most Nigerians commend the federal government's initiative on the 5 billion naira palliative allocation, two questions arise. One, will the state governors be sincere and transparent in the distribution of the food items? Two, will the bulk buying of food not affect food scarcity and high inflation in the country? Musa Aliyu, NTA News. Well, our report sets the tone for tonight's discussion. Let's start off by introducing our guests. We'd like to welcome to this program 
Professor Abba Gambu, the Special Advisor on Food Security to the Nigeria Governors Forum. Thanks for joining us tonight, Pro. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure to be here. Right. Let me also introduce engineer Joseph Bamidili, the National Coordinator of Maize Association of Nigeria. He's an expert in food storage. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. Let me also welcome to this program Dr. Austin Maduka, his General Secretary, National Agricultural Commodities Projects. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me tonight. Right. Sure. And uh, joining us via Zoom is Professor Mohamed Mutaka Usman. He's a professor of economics at the Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria. And also joining uh, us. Evening. Yes, also joining us via Zoom is uh, Abiodun Folawewo. He is a professor of economics at the University of Ibada. He also joins us via Zoom. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us Thank tonight. You. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, and thanks for being here with us too. Well, as you know, at some point in time, you can join in the conversation in the studio. It becomes interactive, and uh, the platform will be there. But at that time, we'll remind you, we'll remind you of the process and the procedure. But straight away, let's begin this conversation and start off from the premise of this 5 billion naira that each state is getting and the trucks of grains which should go to the states to cushion the effect of the withdrawal of subsidy on petrol. And the first question in this we should ask, I guess, is how do you regard this gesture by the federal government? There's been a lot said about it. Does it go way enough? Is it too little? Or is it a significant step as part of palliatives that have been canvassed uh, for the rather sudden withdrawal of subsidy? Professor Abbegambo, let's start with you. Thank you very much, Cyril, once again. Please permit me by starting by congratulating His Excellency, the President of the country, for cutting out the Federal Minister of Agriculture and Food Security. It's something that has never happened before. It used to be Federal Minister of Agriculture and Water Resources, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural uh, Development, but now we have Federal Minister of Agriculture and Food Security so that the ministry will headlong fold into the food security that we are always talking about. And secondly, permit me to also to congratulate my brother and your in-law, Honorable Abakar Kari, the Minister of Agriculture. You know, he took over today, yesterday, sorry, after the swearing-in, and the first statement he made, I want to quote him. The Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Food Security said, he knows the challenges of hunger in the country and that he is going to fall headlong in tackling hunger and food security challenges. So by, by the time you see the comment that is coming out from the man that is going to be in charge, it makes you feel very interesting. As a professor of agriculture, I feel so confident and satisfied that now we have a special ministry that deals with food security. And secondly, we have a man that knows what he wants to do. He has already set up his agenda. Now coming to your question, Cyril, 5 billion naira by any standard is not a small amount. Five billion is not a small amount. So we are now having 36 states. Each of the governors got five billion naira. And each of the governors got five trucks of assorted grains. Some have received all, some has not received. So is it too little or too heavy? What I would like to say is the palliative wouldn't have come at a better time. There is hunger in the land, everybody knows. People, Nigerians are hungry. Everybody knows. So whatever little that you put in, it will actually solve at least some of the little problems we have. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's go on to Engineer Joseph Bamidili. What are your impressions about it? Thank you so much. Uh, I want to congratulate the minister to the particular minister of state. He was one of us at the Federal Ministry of Agri, and he knows what he, where, what he needs yeah. to do. Senator Sad, uh, yeah, he was with us as uh, one new person. But just as Prof have said, a little drop of water make the mighty ocean. 
For now, there is hunger. At least, let us thank the president that, okay, he, he listens. And it is not too small. It is not too small. At least, it will cushion the effect, but not enough. Mm. All right. Straightforward like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Dr. Baduka. Okay. Thank you, Osriel, for um, having me. Um, well, as a practicing farmer and also a community leader, um, Thank you, sir. first and foremost, let me congratulate the president and also the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Food Security. He's a man I cherish so much and um, I believe he knows we are thinking uh, somebody like Bagudu or um, the former governor of, uh, of Jigawa will be selected to be the Minister of Agriculture, but the President, in his wisdom, picked Abaka Kiari. And the man who has said he knows the problem of hunger and uh, how to go about hunger, I believe that statement is, um, is too heavy and I know that he will keep to his words. Now, I'm talking about the palliative. Um, Sincerely, five billion naira is not a small amount of money. But uh, I want to, you know, ask this question to those who would be disbursing this palliative. Uh, what parameter will we be using to know who is a poor person or a small household that will assess these inputs when it's going to be shared? Uh, I remember in the, in the late 80s and uh, in the early 90s, you can see an average Nigerian. You can know an average man who is doing well. But these days, no average family again in Nigeria. Everybody is poor. Once, if you are rich, you are rich. If you are poor, you are poor. So I don't know the parameter that is going to be used in the distribution of this palliative. And from what we had is 200,000 metric tons of grain, associated grains that will be shared. And uh, five uh, trailers and six trailers is going to states. That's not good enough. Because if we have two, 200 million Nigerians and we are bringing the same amount of grains to be distributed, that means each person will assess one metric ton of grain. The combination of all the grains, be it rice, be it, um, uh, be it uh, maize, be it um, wheat, be it uh, millet. So that means every family, one person in every family must assess one ton, which is 10 bags of 100 kg of rice, 100 kg of beans. So if you are giving to states 500, um, five trailers, which is about 600 times five, that's not good enough. I don't know the statistics they are going to be using. I don't know how it's going to be shared. Who are the variable Nigerians? Which uh, data are they going to use in this distribution? That's right. my question. Well, so many questions. Let's go over to Professor Usman, uh, Ahmed Bello University, Zaria. He joins us via Zoom. Uh, yes, we're linking up at this point with Professor Mohamed Mutaka Usman of uh, yes. the Ahmed Bello you. University, Zaria. Yes. What are your impressions? Yeah, thank you, Sir. I, I, I think as an economist, uh, whenever you are coming out to policy, you first assess what is the situation on the ground. From the statistic in the country, there is 130 million uh, multidimensional poor and uh, you come out with this policy but but be, uh, as it is you assess the policy from the perspective of the quantum of the problem you needed to address uh, to me uh, that uh, are the key questions one uh, ab initio the government said palliative but i am not a medical person but when a medical doctor tells you that he will give you palliative, that means he don't have cure for you. He's just going to manage your pain and, and allow you to sustain that pain until the, the end date. Uh, so I don't think that's what the government uh, is intending for Nigerians. 
So, but uh, doing that, you need to assess what are the yardstick, what are the uh, uh, tools that will make that policy work. And that, that's what uh, I live to see and also to suggest a uh, way forward. But uh, actually, as it's called palliative, uh, it's not solving the problem, but rather just giving a, uh, a painkiller for, 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 for the person. All right, thank you very much. And uh, let's join uh, Professor Abiodun for that way. Well, and uh, yes, it's not a solution from the last uh, speaker. It's just a palliative, just uh, something temporary. So what are your impressions? Thank you, Srin. I think, uh, let me first say that something is better than nothing. Why? Five billion palliative to state is a good starting point. But the question is, how far can it go? To me, it is a short-term measure. It cannot holistically address the issue at hand. Now, uh, you will agree with me that we have gone through this route before. And all of us, we saw the results during the uh, COVID era, palliative, full stops, and the rest were ruled out. But what was the effect? And that is the question people are asking concerning this uh, palliative also, that what is going to be the effect? How effectively is it going to be distributed? Now, uh, my colleague just said, uh, the latest statistics we have, it shows that we have about 130 million Nigerian that are multidimensional poor. Now, the government, the federal government said that we will have uh, 12 million people, the poorest of the poor, within uh, the social roster. Now, when you come down to it, to states, do we have accurate data? Do we know those people that are really in need of uh, this palliative? So uh, 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 the issue which we need to address is not whether it is uh, good enough or it is small or it is big enough. We should ask what are the yastic, what parameters are the state going to use you know, in the distribution of this uh, palette so that it becomes effective. And uh, don't forget, we also, when you are evaluating a policy, you need to know what is the nature of that policy. It, we, all of us are talking of five, uh, five billion. In recent, is it five billion? You have four billion to be released. One billion is going to, uh, to go for direct purchase of food stuff, uh, rice, grain, and the rest. Now, out of the four billion, 40% of it is a loan, while 52% is a grant. And of course, the loan is meant to be paid back after a three month uh, moratorium. It's going to be paid back on instrumental basis over 20 months. So uh, we begin, there are, several, there are several issues to be addressed within uh, with the issue of the palliative. So I think as we go on in the uh, program, we'll be able to address some of these issues. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Professor Folawewo. Yeah, but yes, uh, the announcement, as we said in our introductory comments, has drawn heated debates around, not the least from the governors, uh, some of the governors who belong to the governors forum that you advise, Professor Gabu, and uh, the, there are reports that some are not pleased with the loan component of these figures. That is, you just had Professor Falawewo uh, enumerate. Part of it would be for direct purchases of food. Part of it would be a repayable loan, which is spread across some 20 months after a three months moratorium. Uh, while not having the privilege of speaking direct one-on-one -on -one with the governors who don't seem to uh, like the loan aspect of it. What are your thoughts in, in when, you, when you somehow believe that 
you being an advisor on food security, uh, you would probably have an input in how uh, the distribution of these palliatives would go. Thank you very much, Cyril. <clears throat> now, to be sincere, the governors met on Wednesday the 16th at our secretariat. We started the meeting by 7 p.m. and we ended the meeting around 1 a.m. But then I don't have the rights and the privileges to talk about what actually happened there. But I want to state categorically clear that the governors are on enormous. They are speaking with one voice. They have all agreed to the components and to everything. Now, what we are talking about is the implementation stage. And for the implementation, we wanted the governors to know that the beneficiaries, identification of the beneficiaries, is Professor Gambo eligible for a bag of rice? Is Cyril Stoba good enough for a bag of beans? Is Austin Madweke on the level that we should give him some palliative? So these are the kind of questions they are going to ask. And the governors have started on excellent let me just give you some particular examples. Let's go to Akwaibo. Pastor Umia, what he did was, the moment he went back after the meeting, he formed a committee of virtually civil societies, women, vulnerable, everything, and he said, this is what they gave me at the federal level. Tell me how to share it. So the report is expected on Monday, and once he gets the report, that's when he will begin the distribution. In Borno State, Professor Zulum has already started the distribution. As of today, Professor Zulum has given food stop to 12,200 households in Meiduguri and Jere local government areas. And in Nasarawa State, Governor Abdullahi has started the distribution. He wants to do his distribution on senatorial zones, the three senatorial zones. He started with Lafia, next he's going to be Akonga, and then Kefi. But then there are some peculiarities that we must see. Some states might have the rice and give, but sincerely some states might not even need the rice. Let me give you a peculiar example again before I stop. Wase in Plateau State had <coughs> drought. So the drought in Wase was not expected. How can you expect that in Plateau State, for goodness sake, there will be drought? But in the whole of Wase, Emere, there was a drought. The grasses were not there. I think they planted three times also. The first planting burnt out. The second planting burnt out. It's the third one that they had to go out and pray for rain. Rain came, and now they are good, you know. But then they are not interested in rice. I had a direct communication with those in Wase, and then they told me that their needs now, first and foremost, is the security. They cannot access their farms. Secondly, they said they don't have a single bag of fertilizer. The crops are there, but the fertilizer <coughs> is not there. And thirdly, they said they need rural roads. Most of the farms are in rural places that you cannot check out the product. So the states are peculiar. When you go to Casina Cyril, as I'm talking to you now, farmers cannot access their farms. And the same thing in Zamfara. Farmers cannot access their farms. So there are peculiarities here and there, but it's left to the individual governors to know the beneficiaries and then to know how to distribute. But I'm happy to tell you that most of the governors, what they did was to set up committees. And I think that's the best way. In most of the states, it's even a kind of apolitical not just the ruling party, but even the non-ruling party, all of them are there. Tell us this is what we have on the table. How are we going to distribute for the benefit of our people? And that's the way most of the governors are going. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, most of these uh, state governors, yes, they set up committees, but we know that the poor of the poorest are mostly farmers. And these people, how are we sure that the commodity associations in the state, in the, this distribution, are involved? Because if, it, if, 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 for instance, in Plateau, just as a prof have said, you are very, very correct. We planted maize, those are the people, they know where it pinches. So we want to be sure that the Commodity Association, we are not sure that the state government, because we are not contacted, they are quoted that, okay, we've not had that. We, if they have not, if those who have not done this, uh, in, uh, start distributing, we will plead with them, we will advise that they should, 
involve the commodity associations in the various states. They know their farmers. The, the, the food production, the 75% of food production is through peasant farmers. Mm -hmm. Subsistence. Subsistence farming. And those are, the, in fact, those are the people who are uh, uh, highly heated by this insecurity and or the drought. So we will want to know and we want to advise the state governors that commodity associations in the various states should be involved. Right. So we're beginning to get a semblance of how this distribution might take off. If you recall that um, not too long ago, a number of the states said they had their own register of knowing who the poorest of the poor would be. They have data on who are the vulnerables. But if you were to come in and say, you have this amount of food to distribute and this amount of cash, what would, be, what would you be saying to the states that are yet to commence? Um, well, Cyril, um, just also buttress what my colleague has said um, mm. and concerning the committees being sent, set up by the governors. And um, from the experience of the COVID-19 palliative, um, I don't know the statistics they are going to be using for this very particular distribution. Uh, just like what my colleague rightly said, uh, I will suggest one, that in all the committees that is going to be set up by the governors, those are, that are yet to receive, know that have not started, should include the farmers association, the town unions, because like in the southeast where I'm coming from, we have every community have a, a president general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every community have a president general, and the president general oversees the administrative administration of that community. Mm -hmm. So the president general of that committee should be involved. The women leader of that committee should be involved. The youth leader of that community should be involved. And there are no cooperative societies that are growing various commodities in that communities that are in need of this palliative, be it fertilizer, be it grain, be it seedlings. They should also be part of the committee. And um, doing so, and also religious leaders should also be involved. They know the members of their church. If it is in the Muslim-dominated area, the, the imam, the whoever is leading that group should be able to know those that I need. Because even during the prayers in the evening, some of these people that have needs run to their leaders. If you go to the church, sometimes after the church services, you see people running to the pastor mm -hmm. to seek for one help or the other. So this kind of persons will be very, very important in the formulation of these committees, using the church, the leaders of the church, community leaders. And uh, that will make their job very easy, and it will also help to get to the needed uh, households, the people that need these things most. And then, as I said earlier, the community leaders should be much involved the association leaders must also be involved. We have over 89 commodity associations, not only rice, not only maize, not only cassava. We have other commodities that are not in the priority crops that the government is giving palliatives to. But there are also foods that we eat on daily basis. Some of those, some of those committees, uh, commodity associations should also be engaged, you know, and also include them in the planning, because we're talking of fertilizer, the fertilizer, how many factories in, in, that are producing fertilizer in Nigeria currently now? Uh, there is already a crisis in Niger where most of the potassium is, is, is get, we get some of the potassium there. There is a crisis in Niger. I don't know how we're going to be milling fertilizers in that number of volume. There is a war between Ukraine and, and, and Russia uh, where most of these raw materials are also gotten. I don't know where we will be getting the fertilizer that will be distributed immediately for the sake of our farmers. And two, if the palliative is coming, it is not coming at the right time, one, but we want to appreciate the president for taking that bold step. Because if in the long term, in the long term, I know that we have maize in the grain reserve, but we don't have rice in the grain reserve. That means they need to 
get involved the, the millers to begin to process rice and there's no rice that is available for now I don't, I'm not sure uh, in the south they may not be needing grains they may be needing gary apple and what have you so they have not considered those because uh, it, 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 we have peculiarities uh, in the south the problem may not be may not be rice may not be uh, may not be wheat may not be so good it may be gary apple and abata have they considered that so i think i should well <clears throat> professor osman this this is getting interesting but i i i want to you know go in a different direction as an economist i think in uh, yeah. economics uh, is giving out money advisable in circumstances such as these? Because there are those who would argue and say the money can go into something else that would be more productive in the end rather than cash in hand. As an economist, what are your views on that? Yes, actually there are those arguments. but. Uh, but a time of this nature where the disposable income is eroded by inflation rate and therefore uh, people cannot afford the basic necessities of life, uh, giving them cash also to address some of the basic issues of life is, is important. But the, the, the main questions, all the, argue, uh, all the discussion going uh, is, is to say, uh, look, uh, committees, committees. I think this committee issue should have been done even before the release of funds. And therefore, uh, it makes uh, the, the, the implementation easier and, uh, and, 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 and smooth in terms of getting the, the, the as they call it, palliative to people who really needed it at that particular point in time. There, there are two questions, there are two issues about this policy. One, uh, the equality among the states uh, is, is a question to be addressed because if you take places like Kano, the numbers of people that are under the poverty line are larger than certain states you put together in the east or in the south. Uh, or uh, you take Lagos like the uh, and compare it with somewhere like Bayelsa in the same pedestal. So, so, so the main issue is to understand the peculiarities of each of the states and the level of needs of each of the states, and also that has been a groundwork supposed to be done before the policy. And two important key issues are very important to this. If you want to give disposable income, the essence is uh, people can go to the market and encourage the producers to continue to produce. Uh, but on the other hand, there is implication for inflation because you said they should take one billion and buy grants. And unfortunately, the government doesn't have a strategic reserve that can just pull out these grants and fix price for it. They said they should go back to the market because this is not a harvesting season. All the grains you see here uh, in the country is from the silos or the private warehouse of individuals. So by the time you said you are going to mop up what is in the market, it will also push the price and pushing more people into trouble than what you anticipated. In terms of distribution money, the simple way to distribute such oh, yeah. certain okay. facilities mm -hmm. that is commonly used. For instance, you said every individual in the state that is paying certain school fees for primary school, they, they should not pay that fees. And therefore, allow them some disposable income as a result of that non-payment of fees. Or you said all the primary uh, health care in all the wards can have a free malaria treatment, the common illness that normally takes money from 
uh, individuals and the poor. These are some of the things I expect. But rather to say that uh, uh, giving money to individuals, how do you uh, going to give this money to? Because if you said you are going to use banks, how many people uh, in, in certain states have even banks account? For instance, in Kaduna State, there are 24 local governments. Only six local governments have a bank branch. And therefore, you find out that majority of the people they don't have bank account to transact that. So I think uh, even the issue now is to see how these uh, advancement. And uh, I bold to say that uh, governors are notorious of uh, being known to uh, use uh, certain uh, funds that inappropriately in an, another place to settle maybe political uh, interests within that in area. So I think there is a need to understand what do we really want to achieve with this policy. One, is it to say that as a result of this problem, we want to see how we can move the economy in terms of production, in terms of... And if you give fertilizers, for reasons. To, to farmers now in northern Nigeria. They can use it at this farming season because farming season is towards to an end. So it has to be next year. So so how much time do you have to fast, uh, 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 falsify Nigerians to say this is the policy we took and this is what we are bringing in to the table for us to discuss. So I think there is a total disconnect uh, between the policy and the reality on the ground. All right. Because even the government contests contacts the social register that uh, the, the federal government said it has. And, okay. and, and to be honest with you, well, the social register... They have there, uh, so um, perhaps over the years they've compiled theirs. But let's uh, quickly put the same question to Professor Falawewo. Do you also have concerns about the possible inflation driven by the massive purchase of food from the same market. Do you have such fears as well? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I, yes, I do. Uh, but I will say I want to follow uh, the path that uh, Professor uh, uh, was the uh, Mutaka uh, Usman uh, yes. just uh, ended. Now. I, 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 I think there are two components of this palliative. We are just addressing one of it, which is the distribution of food stuff and the rest. Now, uh, Professor Abba uh, actually talked about the peculiarity of each state. Mm. Now, what I want us to know, and I want the, if the governors, if they are listening, to know is this. You have problems on ground before the removal of subsidy. Before the election, you have the cash crunch, which actually killed several uh, businesses. Now, on top of that, you have the subsidy removal. Now, with this palliative, which of them are you addressing? Which of them are you addressing? If you distribute full stuff, it is a temporary measure, as I said. And of course, we have contention with the mode of distribution, how effective it will be. But I want us, I want the governors to focus on the other aspect. Out of the five billion, one billion is already taken away for purchase of grains. Now you now have four billion. Now that four billion, what I think the government should do is to look at their states with their peculiarity. For instance, when you come to the uh, Southwest, you have a whole lot of uh, micro, uh, small, medium enterprises that are already in comatose. Can we use this palliative to help them to come back? Now, if you do that, instead of pumping money to the economy, you know, to add to the already heightened inflation, 
you that palliative will help to ginger the productive base of the economy because now what we are saying is we are not, we are not just giving you cash we are giving you money to revive your businesses that are already dying or if not already dead now i think that is one way of making the palliative to be effective now all right thank you so much and um, we have uh, a number of reports we'll be taking as we go on the conversation we'll start off with uh, this report from lagos it is close to three months since subsidy was finally removed on petrol but the resultant effects are still visible in the daily economic lives of nigerians desirous to change the predicament of the people governments at all levels have initiated palliatives with lagos state prioritizing cost of transportation all public transportation that are being controlled by lamata um, all of the high capacity buses will be plying all the routes of lagos at 50 percent discount today 36 states are 5 billion naira richer, courtesy of the federal government, and are expected to use the fund in minimizing the effect of subsidy removal on the people. The extent of uh, support and intervention government uh, does will determine the extent of uh, impacts and how to ameliorate and alleviate the situation. So we appreciate government for what they have done. We commend them. It's commendable. At the same time, we appeal to them to do more. The big question, agitating minds of negotiations, is the criteria for disbursement as they fear manipulation. They can have a sincere committee that will go to the local government and look at what do they need. Some local government don't even have light. You can decide to put up a borehole with that money. People will not buy water, but they will drink from that water. It has impacted into their life than giving the money to state government. Since impact is essential in testing the effectiveness of the interventions, stakeholders say moving steps ahead from creating stop gaps to meaningful sustainable initiatives should be the priority can we channel the same funds into creating empowering atmospheres for people you know such that they cannot begin to create wealth themselves financial experts also lauded the post subsidy intervention of government in the area of distribution of grains hoping persistence will eventually lead to price stabilization it will fight the price of commodity and it will bring it down definitely it will be impactful but the responsibility also lies on we the citizens this is the time a, a, a kind of an agency should stand up to now be going about to monitor prices of commodity although the disbursement of the post-subsidy intervention has commenced in some states. Stakeholders called for sincerity of purpose in ensuring that the federal government's efforts becomes impactful as Nigerians navigate through life post-subsidy era. The next report is from Kaduna. In the State House correspondent after a meeting of governors and President Tunubu, Governor Marazulum disclosed that several palliative measures have been approved to cushion the effect of subsidy removal by the President. The initiative came in the wake of mounting hardship being faced by citizens occasioned through hikes in prices of goods and services. The residents of Kaduna acknowledged the federal government for laudable measures towards alleviating their plight and this is what they have to say. All what people are complaining is how to get food on their table. I believe with this, at least, it will assist the masses at least to put food on the table. If properly shared the way it's supposed to be. So we are hoping that as the federal government has done their, do their part to assist the masses, let the people in the charge of distributing this do the right so thing. If government can do anything meaningful or hurriedly do the issue of this social registration, so that government, it will help government now and in future to know the rightful people that are in basic need of this help. We must have good monitoring through our normal, uh, our old method of uh, getting to the, to, to the poor by the Hakimais, uh, the Gatei, and all the, the emirs. Through them, we can get 
to, to the root cause, but it has to be properly monitored because they are the people at the grassroots. Already some states have set the ground running towards implementing formulas for onward palliative distribution. <laughs> All right, it seems the general concern everywhere is the, um, the criteria, the mode of distribution. But so far, we have been looking at the distribution of cash and uh, commodities, grains, etc. There are also other aspects of cushioning the effect of the subsidy, uh, subsidy re removal from petrol. But those will come to in just a minute. Just, just one little matter. So we'll just take it a little bit more on the question of food security here and uh, Professor Abagambu, you would have an idea of the state of food security in the country today. Um, before the subsidy with uh, removal and now that this has happened, give us an idea into how food secure is Nigeria at this moment. All right, thank you very much. Now, to be candid, food security equals national security. No doubt about it. I want to repeat this. Food security equals national security. Even before the removal of the subsidy, Nigerians were not having it funny. So, and then when you're talking about food security, there are three things that we must take into consideration. The availability of the food, the affordability of the food, and also, it must be in a diet form. But then let's talk about the first two, affordability and availability. The food might be available, but then my takeaway home will not make me to feed my family the way I want to feed my family. So there is food security, in, uh, food insecurity there already. And then in some cases, the food is not even available. Farmers went to farm. And then when it is harvest time, they are not even allowed to go to their farms. In some states, you have to pay fees, harvesting fees, to individuals that came from nowhere. So this is the kind of scenario. But then let me just say something serious. The Nigerian Governors Forum was aware of all this. And what they did was they took the bull by the horns. And I want to give kudos to our DG, Barisa Okaro. What he did was he now called in the permanent secretary of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, and then he came and they, he addressed the governors. He was there. He addressed the governors. So at the end, what the Nigerian Governors Forum achieved was that all the governors have now aligned to the agricultural policy of the federal government. And that's the um, uh, mandate of the Nigerian Governors Forum, actually. It's just like a bridge between the federal and the subnationals. So what the National Google Nigerian Government Forum did, they invited the Palm Sect, President Palm Sect. He came and told the governors, this is what we have. In fact, after the presentation, it was also done at NIC. There are so many funds, plenty of funds, I want to repeat, plenty of funds lying in the Federal Ministry of Agriculture that some governors are not even aware, they are not even ready to access. But then by the time the DG of the governors forum brought the palm sect and the governors, now the governors are aligning. And some of the funds that are there for them to access, they have now started accessing. So in, the, in perspective, what I really want to say is that the federal government and the state governments are now in total. They are together. And then secondly, I want to repeat something. Most of the things they are going to buy, the, we advise the governors that look at your local market. For example, in Kaduna, we we'll say the governor should emphasize on buying maize from Saminaka, which is a major maize place. So by the time you buy the maize directly from the farmers, you are empowering the farmers. We know of the inflation, 24.08% in the country. But then most of the poor people like uh, uh, Austin Madikese said, are the subsistence farmers. So when you now mop up the grains from the farmers, you are enriching the farmers. And the money is going to stay in your state. So for other states like uh, Lagos, what, uh, what we expect them to do is that just assess what you have within your own local market. Through that, you can empower your people financially, and then you can also settle the food security gap. And I think the governors have all agreed to that. So all the grains or whatever is not just grains, tubers, cassava, etc. in many places, they should be bought from their localities. 
We don't expect one governor to now go and meet another big supplier somewhere. For example, in Kano, you cannot expect somebody to go to Dangote, give us some more rice. There is the now market in Kano, which is one of the largest grains market in the West African sub-region. So we expect the government of Kano to enter the Wano market, mop up whatever that they can mop up, and then redistribute to the people. It's now st within the state. By the, by, you, by the time you buy the grains, you are empowering the farmers. And now you come back and then you, you distribute to the same people in the state, you are still empowering them. So that's the way to go. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. Sir, you remember during the COVID-19, mm -hmm. we never imported any grain. And we had enough. And we moved. In fact, once upon a time, we rejected food aid from some in the country from outside why because the farmers were able to produce and the inflation rate was so low as at that time the prices of a bag of uh, maize was so low that our policies government put in the farmers were able to produce why we are in this mess uh, for maize association of nigeria as at january to march the price of 100 kg of, of maize was 20 something thousand. Now, for fresh, for fresh maize, you can get it 35. But dry maize, you'll be going to 50 something thousand. 63 today. Can you imagine? Why? Today. We caused it because we tried to throw away the baby with the bath water. Mm -hmm. The government refused to put money. If, yes, the money to Anchor Boras program, we were able to bridge the gap. I was in the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. During the COVID-19, I was a member of the Presidential Committee of the Distribution. I was in Gusau. Oh, we had this thing distributed here. Now, why we ran into this problem was total stoppage of this uh, 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 help to the farmers. Yes, that is true and Borders program. We know there are problems. We know the farm, but did this program, did it achieve its aim? Yes, it does. Now we stopped for two years and we are running hater scatter. If we had modified this thing, look at it and not stop it at all, just as we did, we wouldn't have been talking of inflation or lack of food. To be candid, unless we sit down and remodel that program, you just need to help the small scale farmers. Yes, we may not, the farm, there may be some challenges in the Ancoboras program. But did they achieve it? Aims? Yes, it does. All right, there are still some other aspects as well. Um, as you, uh, General Secretary of the National Agricultural Commodities Project, said uh, again, evacuation, storage, all oh, these come into the whole gamut of grains preservation mm. distribution because mm -hmm. if you don't store them mm -hmm. what would you distribute at the end of the day that you have here what would you say is the state of this going by the commodities that you have uh, well since still um, <coughs> one um, starting with the food insecurity um, the food insecurity was a major challenge uh, for almost three or, or, or four years majority of the grain producing states were unable to produce enough. Uh, even when they produce, uh, some of them cannot even assess their farms because of the banditries and the kidnappers and the headers. It, so it became a national issue and a national challenge that um, most of these farmers in the northwestern part of Nigeria and northeastern part of Nigeria were unable to produce. And then what we have in the grain reserve is not enough. Because it is where you grow that you'll be able to, when you have, the, you have, uh, have excesses, that you can store your excess and then use the, the other ones for domestic purposes. And then you can also sell for export or local consumption. But now, because of the challenge of insecurity, most farmers were unable to go to their farms. And like perishable items like cassava, that's almost 75% water. If you harvest and you're not allowed to take it from the farm, within 48 hours, 
it becomes a useless commodity. Nobody will buy it from you again, except for those who are doing starch or ethanol. It will not be for food again. So what we will suggest as an association, National Commodity, National Agricultural Commodity Project, it's a combination of over 80 commodity associations, which means it's inclusive. We're trying to see how we can help the government. One, to discuss more on food production. We have relied more on rainfed agriculture, and that has not really helped us. Nigeria should leave um, uh, rain-based agriculture, and you do an all-year-round farming, where we'll have enough time, most especially during the dry season, if you go to the northern part of Nigeria, you see more people growing grains during the dry seasons. But one, the government must provide security. Uh, under the National Agricultural Community Project, we are trying to see how we can work with the National Security, Nigerian uh, Security and Civil Defense Corps, the Agro Rangers. The government should empower the Agro Rangers the more and also get involved with in local vigilantes to also assist these farmers. Because if, in some places like um, in Boronu, there's some parts of Boronu that you cannot farm now. You can't there farm there now. There's some part of Yobe you can't farm now. In some part of Zamfara, Katrina, Sokoto, Kebi, there's places you cannot farm now. If the farmers dare that, that is the end of that farmer. Mm. And then the government must, uh, thank God we have a new administration, thank God we have no service chiefs. The National Security Council should see food security as a national security. The national security advisor should take up national food security as a national challenge and call a national stakeholders on food security and national security. Because once one is hungry, the person is bound to cry. There's no two ways about it. And then when the farmers are not sure of their life and their safety. The fear of uh, production will be very difficult because nobody will want to lose his life because he wants to grow food for his consumption and for the nation. So the government must see food security as a national challenge and also begin to work with the security uh, agencies in the land to also see that this the, the air is safe, the ground is safe. All right. All right. Well, at this point in time, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll consider other aspects of um, the palliatives, if you like. Uh, we'll consider other aspects of uh, measures to cushion the effect of the withdrawal of uh, subsidy from petrol. When we return, the lines will also be open, and you can also join in the conversation in the studio. So stay with us on NTA Tuesday Live. We'll be back shortly. The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youths. Let's build our nation. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. I believe we have fought one civil war too many in this country. So those who experience it will run away from it. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Issue-Oriented Innovation Talk Show. All right. Thanks for staying with us. 
Uh, this segment, of course, is when we open the phone lines and you can get to join in the conversation in the studio. The numbers will be on your screen, advice to take advantage of them. And we also like to remind you, as we do every Tuesday, that if you call in, in tonight and your call gets through to the studio, do us a favor, turn down the volume of your TV set. That's the way to avoid the hurlback or the echo. And we also like to encourage you to keep it short, straight to the point, so others can also get on the platform and air their views. We ask you not to bother too much about the greetings, just a simple hello would do. So, right, we start off this time with another in our reports. This one is from Port Harcourt. The removal of fear subsidy comes with its attendant consequences on the cost of living. Food items, transportation, housing, and petroleum products have witnessed significant surge. Here in River State, the government introduced a free mass transit scheme to help cushion the effect on the masses. It's helping to reduce the cost of transportation. The latest decision by the federal government to approve 5 billion naira as palliative for each state to observers is commendable. Let them do something that will benefit everyone. What they need to do is to ensure that things are working. While the government intention to help mitigate the impact of the fair subsidy removal on the poor masses, experts are concerned about absence of real-time data of the vulnerable and how best to reach them. State governments should, as a matter of you know, urgency, seek to go through the ward levels, not just the party, along political party affiliation or whatever lines, but let it be that we try to address, especially the food stuff that has been made available. Let it go to the real vulnerable. Let it not be a tool of political patronage. Now they have said they are going to share it to uh, the vulnerable people. The question is, who is the vulnerable? Every Nigerian as far as this fuel matter is concerned, is vulnerable. So what is the criteria for determining these things? Pyle Duko is of the civil society group and wants the government to use the churches, community unions and social groups to get across to those the fund is targeted at. Consult church people, consult several agencies so that they can help you. Because if government want to share these things within their domain, it will be very difficult for them to reach out. Analysts of economic development in Nigeria want the nation's leaders to look beyond the short-term response and drive the economy to the production pathway as panacea to addressing the current economic challenge. All right, from Port Harcourt, we go over to Enugu for our next report. Recently, the federal government approved the sum of 5 billion naira palliatives and trucks of rice for each of the 36 states of the federation, Abuja inclusive, to cushion the effect of subsidy removal on Nigerians. In appreciation to federal government's gesture, Enugu state government says it has rolled out measures to complement the effort of the federal government aimed at ameliorating the economic hardship faced as a result of the first subsidy removal and its attendant economic challenges. To ensure that these palliatives actually elevate the people, the sufferings of the people. And in the, in the next few days, the Enugu State Government will start disbursing these palliatives so that the people will start gaining from it. The Enugu State has evolved a strategy to make sure that this amount of money gets to the people destined for it. There are categories of people who are challenged. In the light of that, we will also ensure that this amount, whatever it boils down to, giving them rice, beans, produce that can help them make a better living. Residents of the state commended the federal government for the intervention, but expressed fear if the palliatives would get to the intended beneficiaries. They, among other things, appealed to the federal government to set up a committee to monitor the distribution and disbursement of the palliatives. If people get that uh, uh, palliative, it will help. What I, I think will make uh, the distribution better is when a committee is formed from top to bottom so that they'll be held responsible if the distribution is not well taken care of. If I'm to say the money should be shared in local governments, then the ways we go to the, their own local governments and collect the money because there is the Igwes who we know 
the people that need. You no, know, it's the grassroots that, that this money is meant for. They are suffering it. You know, that is the thing. It's a welcome development. Given that the first subsidy remover has led to hardship and inflection, it will, however, reduce Nigeria's budget deficit, borrowing and free up funds for other sectors of the economy. All right. Uh, last report there from uh, Inugu. There is an aspect of which I said we hadn't touched on. It was also part of um, measures to cushion the effects of the subsidy withdrawal, albeit at the federal level. And some states have keyed into it too. They've announced their own measures. And this has to do with transportation, the bringing in of uh, buses that will ease mass transportation. Now, if, for instance, the people are receiving cash in the rural areas, it is expected that, as uh, Dr. Baduka raised, the movement of commodities from the rural areas to uh, the markets would also be challenging in terms of transportation. And so, if for human movements, uh, commuters have access to cheaper transportation, then it's expected that that might also result in uh, more resources or more people being able to move around and more commodities being moved around. Professor Abagambo, what do you say about that aspect of it? Thank you very much, Cyril. Now, in all your reports, is the issue of five billion and a governor. In all the reports, the issue are just two, the five billion and a governor. And then I want to say, categorically, for the very first time, we have a set of governors that are more enlightened, more educated, and more exposed than their predecessors. We, the Nigerian Governors Forum conducted an induction for all the 18 of them are new. The remaining are coming back. So we did an induction for them. And then in the induction, in fact, we called virtually everybody. The um, Okonjo Ewela was there, the governor of New York, and so many other personalities were called. I want to say it categorically that the governors also are well equipped. The same governors we're talking about are the same governors that moved all the nooks and crannies of okay. their states to okay. campaign. Okay. And they also made electoral promises. So now what you are saying is, since you have extra $5 billion, and you know your terrain very well, and you've already made plenty of electoral promises, you can use the $5 billion to cushion whatever. The first issue is the transportation. And Cyril, before transportation, I want to tell you that the post-harvest loss in this country is 67%. 67%. Out of every 100 tomatoes, 67 never got to be used. Out of every 100 uh, oranges mm. from Boko in Benue State, 67 never got to be used in whatever way. And we did a peer review of all the states by the Nigerian Governors Forum. I want to say that we've never seen a single functional agro-processing plant in any of the 36 states. So now what you're telling the governors is you have an extra fund, you've already made plenty of electoral promises, but then the main issue on ground now is the issue of transportation. If the crops are not transported to where they are needed, so they are, the post service loss increases. Like my brother said, yam, once it gets lost, you've lost it completely. So what you are saying is there are two issues here. The crops are in a particular area, and the area does not have good roads. You have five billion. Putting a single good road into a place where there is much harvest will do a lot of benefit to the people than even giving them cash. Because okay. you now make the, the crops are going to be mm. taken out. Okay, let, let, let's just ask you to pause a while and uh, we'll see if we can get in the first uh, call of the evening. Uh, we still have the call online. Right, this is Musa, I believe. Calling in from yes, Abuja. Yes, this is Musa. Good evening, gentlemen. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I think in as much as this is a laudable objective by the federal government, I think um, the peculiarities, like some of the panelists actually pointed out, the peculiarities of the state needs to be taken into account. Five billion, yes, is a huge sum of money, 
But when you put five billion in a state like Gombe, it will actually be seen. But when you take the same amount to a state like Lagos or Kani, it can have a meaningful impact uh, by virtue of the population of those states. So I think what the state governors need to do, ought to do, is to look at micro, small, and medium scale enterprises in their states. Use some of this money, like I was made to understand that one billion out of the five billion will be used for the purchase of grains, then the four billion should be used to boost the uh, micro, medium, and uh, small enterprises so that they could contribute more to the economy and empower these people and build up the GDP. Instead of just um, using it for expenditure, um, purchase grains and what have you, then like you rightly pointed out, transportation is another um, aspect where the government needs to really take a look at so that um, the palliatives will actually make a meaningful impact. That's my uh, honest and humble contribution. Thank you very much, Mr. Colin in from Abuja. Thank you so much. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's go over to Professor Usman. And uh, the economics of transportation, food security, evacuation of produce, and the fact that we also have reports that um, some states are looking to increase whatever the federal government is given. Um, we've had reports that some states are even looking at, uh, you know, sourcing an additional two billion to the, what they are re receiving, so they could go in and provide more support for the vulnerable. Um, Professor Usman, just before you answer that, let's take in this call that's coming in at this point in time. Yes. Hello, good day, sir. Yes, from Abia. You're calling in from Abia, right? Yes, how are you? Yes, good. Tell us your name and go ahead. Paul, I believe. My name is Paul. Okay, yes. go ahead, Paul. I want to say, uh, yes, I have just a little contribution about uh, our our country here, you know. So, there should, there should be proper planning for our people. People are suffering so much in Nigeria. Everything should be put in order for people to have freedom. You understand what I'm saying? No matter the subsidy, whatever, whatever. So whatever we want in our country is let peace reign in our country so that people shall rejoice. Thank you very much, sir. Right. Thank you very much, Paul. Yes, uh, Professor Usman. Yes, thank you, Cyril. But, but before I just respond to your question, let me just correct a certain impression. If you went to the Wano market now and Saminaka market, you are not buying from the farmers, you are buying from the middlemen. You are not empowering the farmers, you are empowering the middlemen. Because this is not harvesting season. For anybody who knows agriculture very well, this is not a harvesting season. So the farmer doesn't have any grains with them now because they have no harvest. That's, that's by the way. For, for transport, it's very critical to all this. Uh, most of the states, almost all the states, have their transport companies. So what they do, the first thing is to slash the price of that cost of transport from one location to another by, let's say, 50 to 60 or 70 percent if possible. And they should also both other vehicles and other small, small vehicles that will go around with a very low fee so that it will help people to move from one place to another. And the most critical thing is that you should not forget the workforce because all these things that you are, you are doing, unless the workforce are motivated to follow up the implementations, you... So there is a need also to provide some ways at which the, the civil servants, the public servants, will have an ease in their life. Uh, one of those things is to provide free services for workers to go and come back from work. And also, in certain cases, if there is availability of uh, infrastructure, they can work from home and uh, other things that can be done. Uh, to facilitate the uh, the cautioning of the effect of the policy. Uh, but the most critical thing is that 
for Nigeria, there is a need to sit down and ask ourselves, where do we want our country to be? What are we going to do to make this country better? And therefore, in 30 to 40 years now, we are taking pills from somewhere. Let's look elsewhere to say, let's Nigerians sit down and chart the way for them to actualize the dream of our uh, founding fathers. So I, I, I think two things. They should expedite compassion process also on uh, uh, CNG uh, compassion process that is proposed for the country so that uh, uh, there is a little bit substitute to PMS that is very expensive so people can use gas uh, as as an alternative to which is cheaper and which is available as at now. So, but on, unless those things are done properly, uh, it will end up in the day without seeing the effect of that. All right, thank you. And, and uh, finally, okay, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah finally, uh, I, I, I think in terms of transport system, there must be a deliberate attempt by states to establish even a linkage from one state to another in terms of railway service because the railway service is the most cheapest and easiest to move goods from one area to another in, in terms of those states. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, we have uh, Colin in from Ibado. Kunle, Kunle from yeah. Ibado, go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Well, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Please. What I would like to suggest for us on this program, sir, uh, is uh, it's unfortunate that the insecurity we, uh, we have during the Dwaris uh, administration was a deliberate action. It's a deliberate one. It was a deliberate action against his government. Now that thing is backfiring to everybody now. So what are we suggest, sir? If there is a way, sir, that uh, the government of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu will call on our elite, because one, one each of them, the elite of this country, they have money more than this country 1,000 times. They have the money with them, sir. So let them call them out to come and help this country. This is the time we really need their help. The Nigeria, the masses need their help. Each of our elites, they have money that is more than government. 1,000 times in this country. That, that is what that. Another area sir, is that our railway, sir, they should call the, managing, the management of railway corporation, sir. So from Lagos to Kano, from Potaka to Maiduguri, they should, as a matter of urgency, to revive that railway. So by the time that one is done, it will, by the time they, started, they start moving the food items from the northern side to southern side, sir, it will reduce the prices of the food commodities. So they should place this is, is, is authority. It is was a deliberate action. So on uh, the... Well, um, Kule, thank you so much for calling in. I'm just um, a little bit surprised that uh, you saying that um, the security is a deliberate policy. I'm still wondering if really there's any administration in any part of this country that would deliberately kill its people. And uh, perhaps maybe when uh, Professor Polarewo would come in at this point, perhaps he would want to respond to that first before uh, we go into the matter of easing of transportation. And by the way, of course, as you would know, Kuli, that... Um, a lot is going on into the rehabilitation of the rail system, and that states can now um, <laughs> set up within their territories uh, what, you, uh, what you could call a system, uh, adequate system of transportation, rail system, unlike when it was exclusive. Okay, so let's go on to Professor Falawewa. Okay, and just uh, as we are... Okay. I, I, I wouldn't want to... 
Pro okay, Pro Hello. just as we are uh, just as we are getting ready to put you on, let's take in this one more call, and then you, you can comment. Um, from calling in from Abuja here is Joshua. Joshua, go Hello. ahead. Good morning. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. Go on. Yes, yeah. uh, please. Uh, I want to make my contribution. Okay, I'm the man from Plateau State. This one. Yes, Joshua, we're waiting. Okay. Uh, I said uh, this government of uh, policies that they are giving now, especially on the five billion to the state government. And this question is uh, giving us a concern, especially if you look at it. When this subsidy was removed, since May ending, you see that there was no plan for this removal because the budget did not capture it. And uh, perhaps uh, this uh, five billion to state governors is just like enriching the. Uh, the rich and making the poorer to be poor. Okay. Because if I look at it critically, most of these governors will go into buying of cars to give to their people. Okay. And it will not even help the country to per se because these cars will still take fuel at 620, 650. And the people, the commercial, Except if they will give it free, and how long will it take? Well, that is my suggestion. All right. So, so if you could just clarify for us, would you? Um, you calling in from where are you calling in from? Hello. I think he's left the line because I, at a point in time, I didn't quite. Uh, uh, I wasn't quite sure it was Joshua that we had earlier introduced, but. Um, Anyway, there it is. His feeling is that um, the five billion is to enrich, further enrich <coughs> the rich and impoverish the poor. Well, uh, guests here will make their comments on that. But uh, earlier, before that call, we we're going on to Professor Folawewo, and uh, yes, there you are. So let's hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Th th thank you. Uh, let me uh, quickly respond to. Uh, the previous uh, caller before the last one. I wouldn't agree that the insecurity was deli was caused by the government deliberately. Maybe what he meant to say is that the government was not uh, able to tackle the insecurity enough. Maybe that is why he said uh, it was deliberately uh, orchestrated. But uh, I think that, by the way, now we are addressing the issue of transport. Yes, I agree with you, given the new uh, uh, act that, uh, that, that, that has been signed, that states are now empowered you know, uh, to implement or to go into their own uh, you know, rail, uh, railway transport and the rest. But now I, I want to leave the issue of the transport to food uh, security. Now, the immediate and the first effect of the uh, subsidy remover is increasing transport cost. So, apart apart from gov governors rolling out uh, buses into the cities, then reducing cost of uh, transportation and the rest, I think uh, we can they can go further by looking at the logistic aspect of agriculture no because when you talk of uh easing or reducing the food insecurity uh, insecurity we need to look at the complete value chain of agriculture and one of uh, within the value chain you have the transport the, lo the transport the logistic now uh why is solving the problem of urban transport city reducing the transport fare providing free ride and the rest we should also focus on rural uh, areas where these foods are, uh, are coming from is it possible for us to find a way of providing transport so uh so called to farmers how will they be bringing even if 
you you uh you give them fertilizer and the rest or you give them money to boost their production the, the question still remains they are still going to incur high cost of transporting this uh food uh this uh, farm product to the city so i think we, we the government should also look at a way of you know uh questioning this uh transport uh issue with respect to agriculture so uh, i i i i i'm advocating for okay look using that uh, transport uh, system to actually address the issue of uh, food security. All right. Thank okay, you. So we're, oh, thank you very much. Uh, back to the phone lines now. We have another caller on the line. Hello. Dikko calling in from Kebi. Thanks Hello. for staying on with us. Hello, Hello Dikko. Thank, thank you for staying on. Go ahead. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. You're welcome. Good evening. But, but, okay. My own take on this my advice or my own take on this uh, is for the uh, our governors. I think I, I came from, uh, I, I'm from Arugungu, where we uh, produce rice. The issue here is for the palliative, I, I think uh, my advice is on the insurance companies. To let our farmers be engaged in the way and the manner that uh, at least they will be insured. So that at the end of the day, based on natural or artificial, you know, hazards, because sometimes they are clear but they are flooding, which come and take away the product that our farmers used to produce. So in the event there are insurance companies who will be engaged, I think our farmers will little bit, you know, have some impact than what they used to do. So that is my own advice on this. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, interestingly, Professor Abagam, very recently we had this uh, quillia birds in some parts of um, uh, the north that wreaked havoc on, on farm produce. Hardly had the farmers and the communities, you know, recovered from that. Then uh, we got into this situation. So that's uh, uh, it's made the, it's made it uh, a dire situation here. Some other call coming in from Zaria this time. All right, but are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes, tell us your name. About the palliative money given to the state. Yes, yes, yes. My we can advice can, is can you hang on a moment? Hello. Are you hearing me? I can the hear you, but I, I just require you to tell me your name and where you're calling from, and you can go ahead. Uh, my own advice is to the government is they could have used this money, all this our. Uh, uh, students that are passing out from the university as uh, uh, agriculture, each stage could have provided a lot for them to farm so that it, it will generate food for the country. Each local government from each state could have generated a land so that they will farm. It could have better than to be sharing all this money, money, money sharing. It cannot go anywhere. And uh, all these are uh, what is it? Uh, uh, industry that has collapsed. They could have used that money so that it will generate uh, employment for the youth. And again, uh, our refineries, by the time they uh, pour all this money there, it will help people to work. And we will have a, will have a future tomorrow that things will be better than all this one they are being. All, all this right. one being is just a mess. Hello? Okay, thank you very much. But uh, you still didn't get across by telling us your name and where you're calling from. Uh, if you can hear me, you can just quickly chip that in. That you're calling in from what part, what town or what state of the country and your name. Oh, there, I think he's off the line already. But anyway, um, something he says, uh, something there interests me. Uh, they talk about putting, ma putting out all the graduates of agriculture, <laughs> including your students, prof, and uh, putting them out there to go yeah. into practical farming. Uh, the new national agricultural policy yes. has that component mm -hmm. of capturing youths and women into the agricultural value chain. 
not just production on the farm. There are so many other things. By the time you look at the value chain, okay, land right. clearing, etc. All right. So, so the so national policy has this. Okay. You ask a question on Kwelabat. Yes, and just before you get into there, uh, Abu Bakr from Niger is on the line. Abu Bakr, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Yes, go ahead quickly. Okay. I want to make a submission. Right. As a retired deputy director for major statements of agriculture. Right. Three things are very, very necessary now for us in this country. One, the issue of security, security, security. Nobody can go to the farm. No, any farmer can go to the farm now with uh, his mind at rest. Government of the day must do something about that security. Secondly, the input. There is no way you give fertilizer or the, 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 seed, the seed and all the input at like a rented uh, period. You are giving the fertilizer at, at uh, July or June, July. What, what, what are you talking? So the issue of all this input must be given earlier than. Oh dear. You see? Okay. And even tractorization, mechanization is very, very important. Mechanization. Because the, 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 the local way of farming is no more, uh, 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 this is, is no more feasible in this country. So our youth can be, in, can be engaged in the value chain. Some people should be, uh, you know, producing. Some people should be processing. Some people should be uh, marketing up to the end. That's my contribution. May God help us. Well, thank you very much. Abu Bakr calling in from Niger. Thank you. Well, a number of things you've put out there, and I'm sure Prof. you in wrapping up on the question of uh, the quillia birds and, uh, yeah, the value chain and what the deputy yes, director yes, said, said, he yeah. actually made some very important suggestions. Right. This motivation of youths into the agricultural value chain is very, very important. There are five federal universities of agriculture. Five. And in all the federal universities, about 70 of them, there is a faculty of agriculture. There are federal colleges of agriculture. There are state colleges of agriculture. And every year, like he said, thousands and thousands, we, we take them out, but then they have nothing to do. So it's like it's either we have to remodel the way we are teaching our students so that the moment they finish, they can get something to do, or else the government has to come in, since everybody is talking about food security. And let us not forget, the first thing that the, government, uh, the present government did was to put an emergency on food security. Even before they're talking the palliatives, before they're talking of the ministers, the first thing that the government did was to put an emergency on food security. So that's why we are excited. And then by the time you mop up the youth, it's going to help. Now to the question of Kwelabat. Somebody called from KB State. And let me just tell Professor Usman, you know, we have different agroecological uh, zones in the country. Mm -hmm. If in his own zone, the harvest is not there, in other states, the harvests are there already. In KB State, Yawiri produces rice three times a day, yes. in a year. Yeah. Three times. And it's the only location. So the first rice of Yawiri is already in the farm. Uh, it's already in the market. And so also in other locations. So the harvest has actually started coming out. And that's why the prices of food stock has started dropping gradually. Now the quail are bad. Is, uh, first, the army worms came. And even before the army worms, the rains came late. The army worms came. So the farmers were grappled with how to control the army worms. The army worms were controlled successfully by, by crude methods. Some were using uh, a kind of dead diesel to kill the birds, etc. So many things. And then as the rainy season was progressing, all of a sudden about harvest, it started in the northwest, particularly in Kebi State. The Kwela birds came when the rice were almost ready for harvest. And they came in swarms of millions. 
And I think at this point in time, we have to give kudos to the present governor of KB State. What he did was he immediately got the chemicals and he got an aeroplane. And before you know it, they spread it. I think they got more than 8 million birds that were killed in KB State. Okay. At this point, let's take in, uh, this probably would be our last call. Um, Solomon calling in from Port Harcourt. And then uh, we can return to Prof and, and round that one. Hello. Hello, Solo. Hello. Yes, go right ahead. Oh, okay. Good evening, all. Yes, good evening. Uh, my contribution is very simple. One of the discussants on the panel mentioned the issue of the distribution formula and the personalities that will handle this distribution. Why? The, okay, the money has gone to the governors, and the governors are expected like he said, to gather all the imams, the pastors, all the religious leaders together, and the town uh, chairman or presidents of the union of the town together, and hand over this money to them, lying who can think as with a formula of how they will go about to share it. But to say to leave it to the hand of the governors, it will just be like the COVID-19 uh, COVID era, where they, some of them have their hearts to store food in the warehouse, and those food got rotten. A woman in Potaco came back with one packet of indomie, one packet, not carton, as, as, as a, a kind of uh, help, uh, uh, assistance to enable the woman to survive, somebody who is locked in the house. Now that we are not locked in the house, uh, only God knows what they will do with this money. So let it leave the hand of the governors completely if you want to have up to 80-90% success about this year. Otherwise, I trust uh, Tuesday Life, there will be a program of post-sharing formula. Gather information from the villages, you will hear that some of the families didn't even see one naira. So it will be removed from, entirely from the governors moved into the, the, the town uh, uh, villagers, traditional rulers, the religious leaders, they come together and then formulate a better sharing formula so that it will go around the people. And again, tell the European Union, if governors are to share it, tell the European Union to write to the governors forum that anybody found uh, one thing on the sharing should be denied the visa then you will get 80% honest in the sharing. What an Thank interesting you angle. Thank you very much, Solomon. What an interesting angle. Why would the EU get involved in the distribution of local resources? <laughs> but anyhow, <laughs> well, about 8 million birds were destroyed in that attack. And uh, here we are discussing, addressing those palliatives. Now, it's somewhere to suggest and say, could part of the efforts, the measures been taken to ameliorate the sufferings of the people brought about by the withdrawal of subsidy, could part of it be directed at those who incurred losses on their farms as a result of those pests that attacked them? Exactly, Siri. Now, let me just say it practically. All of us know the farmers out there are left on their own. No government interventions, whatever, no seeds, no fertilizers, no chemicals. They are left on their own. That is very important. Luckily for KB, the governor was able to eradicate the quail bats. Do you know what they do in other states? They gather young boys and the boys will be clapping. For how long will you gather hungry young boys to be clapping? That's what they do. And then in other states, what they do, you call musicians. They will be beating drums so that the birds will be away. For how long will you pay a musician to be drumming for you? So these are the kind of crude things that are happening in this country. And we must bring them to the table, definitely. So the whole of the agricultural value chain must be addressed properly. I like the contribution from Niger, where the deputy, retired yeah. director said, you have to give them, not during the rainy season, but at the beginning, when they are clearing their lands, that's when they show up their fertilizer. When, they are, uh, when the rains are about coming, their seeds are with them. And let us let, uh, let the nation know that whatever you put into the soil is no longer a seed, it's food. So when you have a seed, it's food. You cannot put it back into the soil. 
So we want a system whereby we have the agricultural research institutes. Every year, new seeds are being developed. There has to be a synergy between the state governments and those research institutes so that the seeds can reach the farmers before the beginning of the rainy season. All right. Um, back to you, Engineer Joseph Bramadeli, and uh, the matter of um, transportation. Of course, yes. you would have faced that in the evacuate in your maize crop as well from all those. Uh, yes, the government is thinking of bringing CNG, a uh, compressed natural gas, mm. uh, powered vehicles. Yeah. And this would expectedly take the heat off the question of petrol, right. which is way, way beyond the means of uh, a huge uh, percentage of the population. Ah, silly. You know, there are three layers. I will start with this. There are three layers of storage. You can't reduce cost of transportation from the farm, right from the farm. Once upon a I from the Ministry of Agri as the director, staff, we have on farm storage, buffer stock, and the strategy. In fact, most governors before now are guilty of the buffer stock. I, I'm sure the governor of Bonu, he knows what is buffer stock. That's why he's leading in this distribution. You once, and we have one ton metric ton uh, 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 storage for farmers. The shorter the distance, the less money you pay for transportation. So, you know, these things just change. So, if you miss one in agriculture, you see the effect. Absolutely. And one of the greatest problems farmers has is bringing input late. For goodness sake, in maize association during the uh, uh, ABP, you want to start farming and the approval of the money comes in July. Gosh. When will the input supplier mm -hmm. do this? I think we need to sit down, every, all stakeholders, and let us do the right thing. Call the farmers, call the researchers, call the government, like, the government and let us sit down in a, and tell ourselves the truth. But I know to transport, because before now, to transport a hundred kg of uh, maize from farm even to the closer warehouse, we pay 1,000. 1,000. So if we multiply that by 620 <laughs> or 890, <laughs> just, just imagine, whether what is it's going to be the gain diesel. of the farmer and all this. Uh, so we need to sit down and discuss, I mean, all stakeholders. Sit down, tell the government the truth. And I want to advise the government should not throw away the commodity transition because Definitely. they know where the shoe pinches. Well, it, it dovetails straight in. Yes, Prof. Yeah, and then just, um, you know, the market women, they meet once every week. Uh -huh. The community leaders, they meet every week. Mm -hmm. The politicians, they meet on daily basis. But then the National Council of Agriculture that brings all the agricultural uh, stakeholders, they meet only once per annum. So by the time you look at the minutes of the last meeting, all the people that were there have been moved to other places. So we want to call on the new Minister of Agriculture and Food Security that at least at the beginning of every rainy season, there should be the National Council. Why should it be annual? Really? Why should it be annual? We are talking about agriculture, we are talking about food security, we are talking about national security, and you want us so to be meeting be only once per annum? It doesn't make sense. So the National Council on Agriculture that is being done once every year, we recommend that at least it should be done once every six months or once at the beginning of rainy season exactly. or at least once every quarter of the year. It's, it's workable and it's practicable. All right, so, and as we were saying just a, a few moments ago, the engineer Bam Daly's uh, thoughts dovetail to that. Speaking about the question of the agricultural commodities, it goes straight to your terrain, uh, Dr. Baduka. Yes. As we begin to wind down in talking about how far uh, these measures would go to cushion the effects of the subsidy 
uh, removal. Uh, and by the way, let's also remember that I think it was a last caller who said that uh, the distribution should be taken off the, the hands <laughs> of the governors. <laughs> so perhaps we'll be uh, well, um, um, it will be Well, it cannot completely take the distribution off the governors. We just suggested that a committee of this eminent Nigerian should be considered in so doing it to be able to get uh, to the real uh, people who are in need of this palliative. Then talking about the Commodity Association and food security and, and movement of goods, um, why is Dangote succeeding? Why is Bua succeeding? Dangote moves his, his cement across the whole state of the Federation and he delivers when he is supposed to deliver. You have major distributors across the country and if they leave Obajana, they know where their next cement is going to. But well, why is it not so with the commodities? One, uh, a lot of state government have vehicles, but what is the maintenance culture of some of these vehicles? One, the government, uh, let's, let's use uh, FCT for instance, the air of fire buses, where are they? It came then as palliative to reduce the cost of movement for civil servants in FCT and its environment. Where is those buses today? They, they are nowhere to be found. But those vehicles were bought by churches and they are still working for the churches now. But when it was for FCT residents, the, the buses were packed. So as association, under the National Agricultural Community Projects, we have come up with a five-year action plan to assist the government. One, to have a central database. You should be able to know the number of people you are catering for, their immediate challenges. We need to start planning in time because agriculture is time by. You can't give somebody fertilizer in December for a waste season cultivation. That means you are already doing for the Christmas for that farmer. And that's why most of these loans are not repaid. Because it will not come timely. And it, it will come when the farmer has no need. Or it will come during the first week period. When the farmer is looking for money for Christmas or for New Year. And you can't blame them. I, I, I heard some time ago that um, some farmers in Niger consume aflasave because there's hunger in the land and this aflasave is to preserve food is to, re to reduce uh, aflatoxin from the food and uh, it's, it's, it's been uh, grown it's been produced with, uh, with sorghum and they thought it's edible and they consumed the, the Afro, Afro save and some of them are dead. Uh, I, I, I don't know how many has lost their life and, uh, 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 because of that very singular art. So the, 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 the challenge here is this, the government and the new Minister of Agriculture and Food Security should, as a matter of national development, bring together all the major stakeholders, major stakeholders in the value chain, the association leaders, the research institutions, the input uh, manufacturers, the logistic companies. Mm -hmm. Now, we, somebody talked about insurance. In Nayek, all they insured is the crop. Yeah. You don't insure the life of the farmer. A farmer has taken a loan and somebody killed him in the farm. Some inhaled chemical and die. He's indebted, and there's no insurance cover for his life. And he's gone, he's gone forever. A tractor operator is operating his tractor. Accidentally, his motor boy, maybe he wants to pick something behind, and he moves and jams here and he dies. That guy has died and he's died for, he's gone forever. No compensation. So insurance of life and crops must also be considered. Okay. We are coming up with a five-year action plan that want to also share with the government to tell them what we are doing as private individuals All right. to also see how we can marry these ideas together and see how we can help our economy and our country to grow.
All right, thank you very much. And now let's uh, go quickly to Professor Mohammed Butaka Usman for his closing comments as we have just a few more minutes left on this program. Uh, let's hear you close, Dr. Uh, Professor Usman. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think it is, it's very important to, to highlight this issue. There is a uh, trust deficit, both from the government and the government. So any policy that comes up, people get doubts. But the most essential thing is to look at what are the essential needs at which those things can be put to address some of the issues we raise. Most essentially in terms of how do we get to the vulnerable people. I think uh, there must be an intervention in transport, in uh, reducing the cost of uh, assessing health care, reduce the cost of assessing education. Uh, people will, will be happy with that and that will go a long way uh, bringing uh, the palliative, as the government call it, to the people. So, so I think it's, it's very critical to look at how to invest in uh, trying to uh, boost in health, transport, education, and also uh, the in the serial sector in terms of SMEs and uh, nano uh, small businesses. Thank you. Right, thank you very much, uh, Professor Mohammed Muntaka Usman, Professor of Economics, Ahmed Bello University, Zaria. Thank you for being part of this discussion. We thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. And now let's get the closing comments of uh, Professor Abiodun Falawewo of the University of Ibadan. Yes. Well, uh, thank you once again. Uh, I, I think uh, much has been said uh, on the palliative. But my uh, closing remark will be we can make the palliative to be effective. One, if the governors are able to do critical analysis of their of the peculiarities of their states. Two, if uh, the distribution of the palliative uh, with respect to the uh, food item, is done using appropriate framework. Framework in the sense that you have the good data for the distribution, and then you use the right people, like many people have suggested that you use uh, community leaders. Uh, you meet right. yourself, my friend. OK. Well, all right. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. You can you hear me? Yes. Just. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. Okay. I was saying that much has been said uh, concerning the palliative, and I said it can be effective one okay. if the governors are able to do critical assessment of the peculiarity of their states, mm -hmm. and then know which area to channel the palliative to. Oh. Then. Uh, in terms of distribution of the food items and the rest, have appropriate data to know who are those people that are okay. actually in need of this uh, palliative. And of course, we can also use it, uh, you know, to address holistically several aspects, the SMEs, the agriculture, and the rest. So even though we may say that it is small, but it can be used effectively, such that it will soon have a lasting uh, effect. Thank you. All right, we well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Abiodun Folawewo, a professor of economics at uh, the University of Ibano. We well, thank you for being part of our conversation. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank All you. All right. And uh, as we always say, no one program can effectively take care of all the issues at stake. We'd like to thank our other guests who are here in the studio with me in Abuja, uh, Professor Abba Gambu. Special Advisor on Food Security to the Nigeria Governors Forum. Thank you for giving us an insight into uh, all the moves to make this work, even though you would not <laughs> disclose to us. Uh, well, somehow in the days ahead, we'll get to know what the governors think. Your about program the today has actually taken the governors to the battlefield. Right.
all the reports were talking about governors. So it's now left for the governors to take charge. At the end of the day, everything finishes at their tables. Okay. So uh, the governors must take responsibility, definitely. Right. Well, thank you very much. And so uh, thanks also to Engineer Joseph Bamidele, National Coordinator of Maze Association of Nigeria. Thanks thank you. for your... Um, for all your contributions and your expertise in food storage that you brought you. to bear on this program. Well, thank you. Thank you. Sir. And let me also say a big thank you to the Dr. Austin Maduka, General Secretary, National Agricultural Commodities Projects. We thank you very much. Thank you. Right. So also for all those who call in, thank you for being part of this program. Next week we'll be back with NTA Tuesday Live. I'm Cyril Stober. Continue to stay safe.